that when this ring departs from this finger, then parts life from hence. Oh, then be bold to say Bassanio is dead. from me, and when your honours mean to solemnise the bargain of your faith, I do beseech you, even at that time may I be married too. Yes. <laughs> well, with all my heart, so thou canst get a wife. <laughs> I, I thank your lordship, uh, you have got me one. My eyes, my, my lord, can look as well as yours. You saw the mistress, and I beheld the maid. <laughs> you loved, and I loved, for intermission no more pertains to me, my lord, than you. Your fortune stood upon the casket there, and so did mine too, as the matter falls. <laughs> for wooing here until I sweat again. Swearing till my very rough was dry with oaths of love at last. If, if, if promise last, I got a promise of this fair one here to have her love. Uh, as long as your fortune achieved her mistress. Is this true, Nurse? No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> it is so. And so you say, please, with all. And do you, Gratiano, mean good faith? Yes. Faith, my lord. Our feast shall be much honoured in your marriage. <laughs> we'll play with them the first boy for a thousand ducats. What? And stake down? No! We ne'er shall win at that game and stake down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but who comes here? Oh, Lorenzo and his infidel. Oh, what am I? My old Venetian friend, Salarino. Lorenzo and Salarino, welcome Heather. If that the youth of my new interest here have power to bid thee welcome, by your leave, sweet Portia, I bid my very friends and countrymen, sweet Portia, welcome. So do I, my lord, entirely. So do I entirely, my lord. <laughs> They're welcome. They're welcome. They are welcome. <laughs> was not to have seen you here. But meeting with Salarino, she did entreat me, apostle saying nay, to come with her along. I did, my lord, and I have reason for it. Signor Antonio, come and see to you. Well, ere I open his letter, I pray you tell me how my good friend doth. Not sick, my lord, unless be in mind, nor well, unless in mind. His letter there will show you his estate. Uh, Nerissa, uh, cheer yon stranger, bid her welcome. Your hand, Sarina. What's the news from Venice? Uh, how doth that royal merchant, good Antonio? I know he will be glad of our success. <laughs> we are the Jasons. We have won the fleece. <laughs> I would you had won the fleece that he hath lost. There are some shrewd contents in yon same paper that steals the colour from the sun. 
Antonio's cheek. Some dear friend dead. Else nothing in the world could turn so much the constitution of any constant man. <coughs> what? Worse and worse. With leave, Bassanio, I am half yourself, and I must really have the half of anything that this same paper brings you. Sweet Portia, here are a few of the unpleasant words that ever blotted paper. Gentle lady, when I did first impart my love to you, I freely told you all the wealth I had running my veins. I was a gentleman, and then I told you true. And yet, dear lady, rating myself at nothing, you shall see how much I was a braggart! When I told you that my state was nothing, I should never have told you that I was worse than nothing. For indeed, I have engaged myself to a dear friend. Engaged my friend to his mere enemy to feed my means. Here is a letter, lady. The paper is the body of my friend, and every word in it, a gaping wound, issuing life blood! But is it true, Sabrina? Have all his ventures failed? What, not one hit from... from Mexico? From Tripoli and England. <coughs> Not one from, from Lisbon, Barbary, India. And not one vessel escaped the merchant marring rocks. Not one, my lord. Besides, it should appear that if he had the present money to discharge the due, she would not take it. Never did I know a creature that did bear the shape of woman so keen and greedy to confound a man. She plies the duke at morning and at night and doth impeach the freedom of the state if they deny her justice. Twenty merchants, the duke herself and the magnificos of greatest port have all persuaded with her, but none can drive her from the envious plea of forfeiture of justice and her bond. When I was with her, I, I have heard her swear to Tubal and <coughs> Duchess, her countrymen, that she would rather have Antonio's flesh than twenty times the value of the sum that he did owe her. And I know, my lord, if law, authority, and power deny not, it will go hard with poor Antonio. Is it your dear friend that is that in trouble? The dearest friend to me. <coughs> the kindest man. The best conditioned spirit and unwearied soul in doing courtesies. And one in whom the ancient Romain honour more appears than any that draws breath in Italy. What sum is he the Jew? For me, 3,000 tickets. What? No more? <laughs> Travel 6,000 to deface the bond. <laughs> Travel 6,000 and then travel that. Before a friend of this description should lose a hair through Bassanio's fault. First, go with me to church and call me wife. Then, away to Venice to your friend. For never shall you lie by Portia's side with an unquiet soul. <coughs> you shall have gold to pay the petty debt twenty times over. When it is paid, bring your true friend along. Meantime, my maid, Nerissa, and myself will live as maids and widows. Come away, for you must haste upon your wedding day. Bid your 
friends welcome and show a merry cheer. As your dear board, I will love you, dear. But let me hear the letter of your friend. <laughs> Sweet Bassanio. My ships have all miscarried, my creditors grow cruel, my estate is very low, my bond to the Jew is forfeit, and since in paying it, it is impossible I should live. All debts are cleared between you and I. If I might see you at my death, notwithstanding, use your pleasure. If your love do not persuade you to come, let not my letter. Oh, love, dispatch your business and be gone. Since I have your good leave to go away, I will make haste. But till I come again, no bed shall e'er be guilty of my stay, nor rest be interposed atwixt us twain. <laughs> 